Alright, hey guys. We got challenged by uh, the Four Hearts Ranch to uh, to do 10 random facts video. Uh, so, here we go. 10 random facts about the Revolting Man channel in our homestead. Uh, I've got a list. I was going to try to wing it. I don't really want to pull my list out though because it's kind of redneck. <laughs> but I guess I'm kind of redneck. What was number one? Uh, number one we were going with, oh, I guess I'll start. Okay. So Mariah and I grew up, I grew up here in Northeast Georgia. Mariah grew up in Massachusetts. But we come from eerily similar backgrounds. Uh, so much so that, that one time I saw a picture of her childhood home uh, and I was trying to figure out how that, a picture of my childhood home I got in her family's <laughs> photo album. I mean, the houses we grew up in were identical. Our fathers both built, built those, you know, they, they both built the houses. Tell us a little bit about your mother and dad, just briefly. My mother and dad? Father and mother and father? Um, you know, very, very simple living, uh, no TV, we didn't have a TV. Um, Built the house from scratch. And, yeah. So, lived in it while they were building it. Yeah, they both, uh, both of our parents lived in, well, my parents lived in a little camper while they were building it. You, you lived in a tent for a while. Yeah, we lived <laughs> in a tent for a while while my parents built the house. Uh, we both lived in houses that weren't finished. <laughs> right. Uh, and then the, the, both our parents kind of came from similar backgrounds and tried to do similar things in very different places. So that was the first one. We, were, we come from remarkably similar places. Uh, I almost don't like putting this one out there, but it's just kind of interesting for where we're at now. When Mariah and I started dating, I've already talked about you know, some of our other videos, what a train wreck I was. Uh, Mariah was much more put together, but you want to tell him what your... Yeah, I was... Um... I had kind of renounced my Christian upbringing, and so I was sort of on a spiritual quest of sorts. Um, I kind of was into the Buddhist thing for a while, and uh, you know, just anything that appealed to me at, at the time that was spiritual. So. What do we got for number three? Oh, we knew each other for about three years before we ever dated uh, in, a, in a professional setting where we both worked. Professional. Oh, well, I'm, it's not professional. We had the same job. I'm we sorry. worked at Applebee's We worked together. at Applebee's. <laughs> I was a train wreck. Uh, uh, but I was always loudly talking about my, my plans for when the shit hit the fan, what, what we would do. Uh, and that kind of initially brought me to Mariah's attention. She, she thought that was kind of cool. You want to comment on that? Yeah, I don't remember you saying it in, at work, but I remember you talk, you talk, telling me about it the first time we talked outside of work, mm -hmm. when we first started dating, and you were like, well, I've got a plan for when the apocalypse hits, and you, and you laid it all out, and I was like, ooh. First this date, is, wow. This is, a, this is a guy I want to wanna be around. There you go. Uh, what do we got? Uh, that should be number three. What's number four? Oh, well, that first date, we, uh, go ahead, you can tell them about the first date. Okay, so the first date we had was, um, he took me to the Shakespeare Tavern in Atlanta to see the Taming of the Shrew. So it was very, uh, foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know your Shakespeare, the Taming of the Shrew is all about this guy who marries this, you know, crazy woman, and he goes about taming her, uh. It's very, very not feminist, very not PC. A lot of fun if you're uh, uh, an alpha male. Uh, and it's kind of funny just because, you know, Mariah was a, a little bit of a, I, I wouldn't say a feminist, but. I was coming out of a very liberal college, so yeah, I, w I had a lot of feminist ideas. So it was a fun first date. Let's see, what was number five? Oh. We have a tradition in, in my family. I'm the oldest of four sons, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, all, all the men in our family, starting with me, uh, except one, have last names from the Bible that end with Aya. Uh, it means of God or, or from God. Uh, the one exception is one of my sons who I didn't get the name uh, because the wages of sin are death. Uh, but a little interesting side note to that is that because Aya was such a big part of, of the, the Aya names, you know, uh, my name is Zachariah. I won't list everyone's names, but, uh, and then I have my, my three brothers who all had last names that end, or first names that end in Aya. I, I wanted to continue the tradition, so I, I chose to, to name my first daughter Mariah. Uh, I, uh, that was not 
a child I had with Mariah, that was from my first marriage. So later on I married Mariah, and now I have a daughter and a wife who aren't related, both named Mariah. A uh, little, little strange, but there you go. Uh, but yeah, all the, my four brothers and five of my six sons, uh, me and my three brothers and five of my six sons all have last names that end in Aya. First names that end with Aya. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's number six? When you talk about your brothers. Oh, yeah. Since we had talked about my brothers, uh, we have a very long uh, military tradition in my family. As far back as we know, every man we know about served. In my, in my generation, me and my three brothers, we, we served in all four branches. So I'm a Marine. And then I have a, a brother who was in the Army, a brother who's still in the Air Force, and a brother who's now in the Naval Reserves. So we're real proud that, that we were able to, to do that. Uh, what else? Is that one? Is that next? I don't know. We'll go with it. Okay. Uh, we, we don't celebrate most holidays, uh, and because of that, we, we don't really do Mother's Day and even really birthdays or anything like that. So Mariah, Mariah gets garden tools for gifts most of the time. And we didn't start out that way. It wasn't on purpose, but somehow we've gotten to a point where she gets garden tools quite frequently for, for birthday <laughs> gifts or, or something. Whatever. We got a wheelbarrow one year, we, we have think. A, we have a video about the hoe that we bought for my birthday yeah, a couple years ago. Probably the most expensive gift I ever bought her was a hoe. <laughs> it's a great hoe. It's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a really good hoe. It is a great hoe. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and I think we got a pitchfork one year, and I, I, we made, I made the, the chicken, the wire for the chicken fence may have been around your birthday or something. I can't remember. There was, there's been something else that just, not very romantic, but, but very, very practical. Useful. Very useful. What else we got? Uh, that was six. There's the brothers. So what's eight? Um. Oh. I have, I, I have many, many, many deficiencies. In, in my chosen uh, area of expertise here. One of them is that I am a terrible hunter. You know, you think for a prepper and a homesteader and a, and a live off the land guy, you'd think that, but I'm awful. I mean, I am the world's worst hunter. I will go in the woods and I will, I'll go in late, you know, while we're on out there about nine in the morning, I'll sit there for about 45 minutes, get bored, and then go try to find some deer somewhere. Which, you know, of course, is just an excuse to walk around in the woods and look at things. So, I've shot one deer in my entire life. Uh, and and that deer just really, he just wanted to die. I mean, he just had it coming. I'd tell you the story, but it'd take too long. But suffice it to say, if I didn't kill that deer, then he was just going to walk out in the middle of traffic and wait to get run over. Uh, terrible fisherman, too. I, I need to learn how to fish. Uh, that brings us to number nine-ish. Is that nine? That should have been eight, right? I don't know. I think we got to ten, didn't we? There's eight. Terrible Hunter is eight. Okay, this one. Nine is... Oh. We're not even sure how to tell you about this one. Uh, once we say a phrase, everyone kind of thinks they know what we mean when we say this phrase. And uh, we're not sure that it adequately describes us yet. Uh, our religious beliefs are trending towards a general area that can best be described as Torah observance. I have a dog hair in my beard. Uh, it's not quite an adequate description yet. We're not sure where exactly this, this whole journey is going to take us, but, but we try to seamlessly integrate the Old and New Testament. Uh, or not try to seamlessly integrate. We, we don't believe that the Old Testament is as separate from the Christian faith as, as most people seem to think these days. Uh, and that's led us to some interesting places. That should be number nine and number ten. We're going out with a bang. You know, I, I, I told you about my, my, my lacking skills in hunting. I do have one skill set that uh, I'm... It'd be surprising to most. Be surprising to most. I am an accomplished ballroom dancer. Uh, maybe not accomplished isn't the right word, but I'm a, I'm a surprisingly good ballroom dancer for, for a guy living on a homestead with a big beard. Uh, <laughs> I love to dance. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, Probably our first big fight was was at a party where Mariah wouldn't dance with me. I, yeah, no, I'm not a dancer. So. <laughs> uh, but I love ballroom dancing. Actually, I'll go one step farther and I'll even admit that when I was a kid, when I was a bully, about six years old, 
I took ballet lessons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only reason I quit is because we were my parents were broke and they couldn't afford to keep me in the in the ballet lessons. But uh, so I love to dance. That's it. There, you know, I, I can't hunt and I love to dance. <laughs> I may really have to give up my prepper card now. I, I thought I was gonna have to do it when I admitted that. Uh, what was that? I didn't have a bug out bag or something. I don't know. There was something else I thought I might have to. Oh, I don't have a 1022. That's right. When I don't have a, I admitted I don't have a 1022. I thought I might have to give up my prepper card. I have to admit I can't hunt and I'm a really good dancer. So I guess I may be out of the shrine now. I might have to find a whole new topic to talk about. But there, that's our, uh, that's our 10 facts for Hearts Ranch. Uh, we're going to pass the challenge on to Jefferson Bramlett and the Logical Prepper. Both these guys have smaller channels, but they're really unique channels. Uh, they, they have a, a very different perspective, and, and it, it's worth hearing something different from time to time. So we're going to send those guys uh, the challenge. If they don't accept, you should still check out their channels. Uh, they're, uh, they've, they've got some worthwhile information in there. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.